everybody, Black Ninja 797 here, and welcome back to another video, guys. In today's video, this is going to be another episode of Myth Busting Mondays. And for the final myth of today's episode, we are going to be asking and testing if you can end up turning on a setting that will disable the boomer vomit in Left 4 Dead. And that's going to be very interesting, because if you can figure out a way to remove the vomit effect from the boomer in Left 4 Dead, this is going to be auto-applied, guaranteed, and will break the game. So, here's hoping that it technically doesn't, because otherwise the boomer will be basically made useless more than he already is. So, we're just going to be seeing how this ends up going. If you guys end up enjoying today's episode of Myth Busting Mondays, please end up showing your support by dropping a like, comment, subscribe, and all that beautiful stuff. And if you have any myths for Left 4 Dead and now Back for Blood, please leave them in the comment section down below. And anyways, guys, let's get on with the next episode of Myth Busting Mondays. Myth. Can you play any of the Left 4 Dead jukebox songs in Back for Blood? Alrighty guys, for those of you that do not know, there is a jukebox that is in Back for Blood in Fort Hope. You can actually go up to this jukebox and end up playing some music on it. This was originally in the beta as well, but however though, you couldn't actually play any of the music. It was just there cosmetically, but now you can play it. It does end up playing a lot of licensed songs. Unlike Left 4 Dead, where they're more, uh, you know, themed to the game and non-copyright. But, however, though, that's fine. The idea is, though, is I want to see, just like how in Left 4 Dead, that there was a secret song representing portals still alive. I want to see that if in Back for Blood, that if we play the jukebox enough, we end up getting a Left 4 Dead song to appear on the jukebox. So what I'm doing is I'm just going up to the jukebox in Fort Hope, and I'm just spamming it. And I'm just going to just see if I can end up getting any secret hidden song. Three hours later. Well, I can tell you guys that after doing this an unhealthy amount of times, that no, there is not a secret Left 4 Dead song. However, though, I did notice that there was another licensed song that appeared at random. There was a whole bunch of licensed songs on this jukebox, but there was one that did pop up only like once, and I think that's supposed to be the secret hidden song but it's not Left 4 Dead, and I also don't know what these songs are by who to tell you guys what song it was that popped up, so I do apologize, you'll just have to do this by trial and error by yourselves. Uh, but there is a secret hidden song, it's just not a Left 4 Dead one, so technically it wasn't the result I was thinking I would get, but we did at least get a result, and that means that this myth is busted. There is no secret Left 4 Dead song on the jukebox. Myth. Can you shove the witch to death in Left 4 Dead 2? Alrighty guys, so we are on Left 4 Dead 2, and we're going to be spawning in the Witch here, and we're just going to be just applying God Mode, and just seeing if we can end up shoving the Witch to death, because otherwise she'll kill me without the God Mode. But I'm curious, because I did a myth very similar to this, in fact the very first ever myth we ever did on Myth Busting Mondays, was doing this exact same thing, but to the tank, and the tank we could not shove to death. Certain infected you can, like the Hunter and stuff like that, but you can't do it to the tank. So now we're going to be seeing if you can end up doing it to the witch. So we're just going to be just going up to her and just smacking her repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly. And just seeing after a while if she ends up dying or giving in. Three hours later. So just like the last myth, I ended up doing this for an unhealthy amount of time. And no, you cannot end up mailing the witch to death. Unfortunately, what just happens is that the game just does not register it as a melee. I'm very confident in my opinion when I say that. I don't think that it was a lack of melees which is the reason why I got the result I did. I just think that the game was not meant to be working in that sort of way. And you can see that I did put in the effort. I mean, there's enough blood in this room that looks like that there was a clown orgy while the clown had hemorrhoids. I just doubt that this is going to give you guys different results if you melee it a little bit longer than I did. So for today's myth on the witch, this myth is busted. Myth. Can you blow up the crows and back for blood to prevent them from alerting a horde? Alrighty guys, so in Back for Blood, one of the ways that you can end up blowing up zombies really, really quickly is by using the Frag Grenade, which is my personal favorite piece of equipment in the game, and I always end up rocking one. Now, however though, when it comes to Back for Blood, one of the things I don't like is the amount of crows that are everywhere, specifically on the very first map, Evansburg, because it always seems to feel that there's way too many of them, and they get in the way a lot, especially right before the safe room. So what I want to do is I want to throw a Frag Grenade at them, and just off of a hunch, assume that the frag grenade will function like it would in real life, where it would just evaporate the crows, and end up seeing if we can end up destroying them with it, so that way they don't end up alerting the horde. Because if you do anything else in the game, such as walk near them or shoot them, they will end up getting angry, and then they will end up making the zombies come to you. So we're going to be testing this theory out, 
And I hope that this works because this would be really, really great and change the meta, in my opinion. Of course, the one time I want there to be crows, there's only a select few of them. So there's a pair of crows down here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get my frag grenade ready and let's just see what happens. So let's throw it. Ready and go. All right. Well, I just see smoke for right now. I just see the blast radius. And yep, there's no more crows. There's no more horde either. Uh, there's just a big pile of blood. So yeah, you can indeed end up blowing up the crows with a frag grenade and back for blood. This is definitely a way you can end up avoiding these zombies now if you really want to. So this myth is confirmed, ladies and gentlemen, and it looks like it's a pretty good strat. Myth. Can you defeat the tanks at the end of the sacrifice? Alrighty guys, so we have blow it up into the end of the sacrifice here. We are on the very last step of the finale. I have God Mode and Unlimited Ammo, and I have the bots here with me. And I'm just going to be lasering the tanks, and I just want to see if we can even kill them. I've never done this before, and I just am curious. Can you even physically kill them? Because they should just function like normal tanks. It's just that there's a lot of them. But normally, people just end up trying to complete the finale the legitimate way. But I want to be a weirdo and just see if you can end up killing them. I'm pretty sure this has been done somewhere before, but I personally haven't done it. So I just want to see what happens. Alrighty guys, so for the last 30 seconds that you guys have been seeing the gameplay of me just destroying the tanks, they function like normal, and all that just happens is when you kill them, they just spawn in more tanks. So this is supposed to be an unbeatable step, and you're not meant to survive, or at least one of you is not meant to survive. But I was just curious for my own self-amusement that I thought I would put it in Mythbusting Monday, so I hope you guys ended up enjoying this myth. So technically it's confirmed, but it really wasn't meant to achieve anything, it was just for funsies. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, now finally for our last myth, we are getting to the boomer myth. This is going to be the myth. Can you end up disabling the boomer vomit effect in Left 4 Dead? I had a very similar myth to this where we decide if we could end up disabling the rain in hard rain, and believe it or not, that worked. You can actually, in Left 4 Dead, if you went into the settings, disable the certain settings to be able to make it so that way the rain in hard rain just goes away. It's not a visual impairment and it acts like it doesn't exist. I want to see if the boomer functions like that. Can we make it so that way the boomer vomit does not impair us like how the rain did in hard rain? And if this is the case, then this is going to change the Left 4 Dead meta forever. Myth. Can you disable the boomer vomit effect in Left 4 Dead 2? Alright, ladies and gentlemen, so here we are. We are on the testing grounds of our final myth here today. I am in a sandbox map. And this map is going to allow me to be able to end up spawning in a boomer in controlled settings. And I'm just going to have the boomers all vomit on me. And I'm just going to keep modifying my settings until I find something that hopefully works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. If it does, it does. But it's really just going to be a trial and error thing. So the boomer has now vomited on us. I am going to go to my advanced settings. And we're just going to be turning off a setting one at a time. And just seeing if an individual setting is all we need to be able to end up removing the boomer vomit effect. And we're just going to just see what happens. So, so far, we just got the normal boomer vomit. And then we're going to end up just trying to see what it's like when we first remove a setting. All right, so let's put our effect detail at low. This should be one of the best possible settings for testing this. So, let's back out and let's just see. All right, nope, we still got the green vomit. Not a big deal, though. We got more settings to test. This would probably be our next best candidate, which is going to end up being these shaders. And keep in mind, I also already did end up turning down my film grain because I just naturally do that by default. So I think that having the film grain also down is going to be a bonus to this. Now, this so far doesn't really seem like it makes a difference, but if you take a look closely, the vomit was more of a dark green, so we're getting close to modifying it. Really, the last thing I can think that would end up changing the graphics is by just changing my filtering mode, uh, because this will make it just a completely different filtering mode than what I normally use. So I'm curious if this does anything, because if this doesn't do anything, I don't know what else will, because the other ones are mostly about just changing your borders and changing your, like, borderless window and stuff like that. And it doesn't look like it does. Unfortunately, it looks like that it just leaves it the stereotypical green color. The closest we got was when we end up changing the green from, like, light green to dark green, but that's really not much of a big difference. So yeah, guys, this myth is busted. I am almost 100% sure that this was to be expected because Valve is trying to end up making it where you can't break their game, unlike some people I know, such as Activision with Call of Duty. So when it comes to Left 4 Dead and the Boomer Vomit, 
you cannot disable it. It is built into the game and is something else that you have to turn on or off, but we do not have access to it. So sadly, you can't end up cheesing the game, but that's probably for the best at the end of the day. So yeah, guys, that's going to be it for today's episode of Myth Busting Mondays. I do hope you end up enjoying seeing both the Left 4 Dead and the Back for Blood myths in today's episode. If you guys want to see more Myth Busting Mondays or your own myths featured in an episode in the future, please not only leave a like, but also leave a like, comment, subscribe, and all that beautiful stuff. If you would like to financially support the channel, I would definitely appreciate if you guys could go check out my Patreon. It's always linked down below in all my YouTube video descriptions. Or you guys can use supporter creator code BLACKNINJA797 in all caps in the Fortnite Epic Games item shops. Because Epic is my very first sponsor, and therefore by mentioning their code, I am having them sponsor today's video. So shout out to Epic, and shout out to Epic for being my first sponsor once again. But yeah guys, I hope you end up enjoying another YouTube video for the most unique YouTuber you guys are ever going to see. Thank you for watching guys, and peace out. Hey, meme lords, Jesus here, and you better have enjoyed that video there by the eternal god Daddy Ninja. You should probably subscribe too, or the mighty Moab will come for your balls. If you enjoyed the video, you might like it too, and give me the memes. Flash, bang, boom!